Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to another episode of Bruin Build. Today we are back in the Steampunk City, but we're going to actually be heading right on over to our Mesa Village that we've been building. And today's going to be a little different of an episode. It's going to be all basically time lapse. There will be a little bit of first person sort of viewing. Uh, at the end just go over what we build um, but I've got some things I wanted to talk to you about and decided to just do it in a time lapse form I think that is probably the easiest way to go about it um, as you can see I did not do anything in here I haven't really been playing Minecraft in the past two weeks I do want to say sorry for not putting videos out but you will kind of learn why that is. So just wanted to say sorry, and uh, let's, I guess, jump into the time lapse so that we can get discussing all that sort of stuff. So let's jump on in. guys so getting on into this talking portion of the time lapse um i wanted to give a brief overview of what we're going to actually be building uh so currently we're going to be creating the rest of the town uh, obviously we need to finish off the rest of the town buildings so the exteriors are going to be finished and that's going to be all good and i think you're going to like it it's uh pretty much it's the same thing as before um just a few more buildings uh, and then we get into a pathway to design and I really like how the pathway turned out. We use mushroom block, um, as you'll see in a bit, and it's actually really, really good. It matches this area really well, I think. It has a nice dirty texture almost, and I think it works really, really well. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, we also figure out a way to add in some vegetation and bring in some green life to this area. Uh, not not too much. Um, it becomes a little bit more of an oasis type of feel. Uh, it's it's just really hard to not sell uh, a living, breathing town without green things in there, uh, plant life and stuff. So I figured out a way to do that that I think is pretty friendly to the sort of the lorish area of the area. Uh, and then we're going to create some salt storage buildings to show I wanted a way to establish the relationship between Brassington and this Mesa village. And um, I like this these builds. As you'll see, there's a cool mechanism that we make that is it's they're two story builds. And so they're really cool. And there's a, a pretty cool lift that we make. Um, and so we're going to be also just forewarning. We're going to definitely take a look at this um after the time lapse and all in first person and walk around and, and look at them so no fear there um, and then finally we've got an office building uh, i actually moved the office building where we originally talked about putting it um, and put it up by the dock area a bit and made it a little bit of a storage area for salt peter in specific and i like it it's a really interesting build um, I've tried to blend the styles together of the Mesa Village and the Steampunk City, and I think I've done it moderately effective. Uh, it's a little difficult. There are two pretty different styles, um, but I like how everything's turned out. I think it looks good. And so that's kind of an overview. That's what to expect in this. We're probably reaching near the end of the village pathway creation, I think. Um, I don't know how long this time lapse is gonna be. It's gonna be as long as I talk essentially is what I'm going to do. So I wanted to get into why I was gone for about two weeks or so, two weeks as of yesterday. I'm hoping to have this video out by Monday, uh, if not Tuesday. Um, and so it's been a mix of two things. So work's been a bit hectic, a bit crazy. We've got a big event coming up in now uh, a week, I think. And I will actually be gone for that full week. Um, and I'm going to be trying to get a video out that that week if I can. If I can't, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just kind of the way things are. I'll be in San Francisco, which is much further away than like a trip to Chicago or something. So I'm going to be out for four to five days. Um, and so I won't be able to record then. I'm going to try and record early if I can. 
but no promises there. Uh, so sorry if there's no video then. Um, and so work's been hectic, but I also am up for a promotion and actually have confirmation now that I did get the promotion. So that's good. Um, I'm not sure if it's a promotion in terms of monetary value. Uh, I think it might be a step sideways in our org to better align myself with something that I'm more interested in. Um, but I'm also hoping there's a little bit of a bump in pay. That would be nice. So that's been going on. And so since work's been hectic with actual having to work, I mean, I've had to work a couple days where I've worked till like 8 p.m. Um, and so it's been it's been bleeding over into regular life. Uh, and so I, I just it, it, I've focused on that. But I've also been focusing on really learning this new role and seeing if I'm right for it and talking with my manager and really just getting a deep dive into that and trying to understand it. I have a small little presentation on it as to why I'm sort of a fit for the role on Tuesday. So I've been really focusing on that. Um, and so that's why also one of the other reasons why I haven't been putting effort into YouTube because real life stuff has taken over a bit. But I also one of the probably the bigger reasons that I I have not played I haven't really played Minecraft in about two weeks now and the reason is because I, I wanted to take a little bit of a break from playing Minecraft uh, because I was feeling a little burnt out um, the the village portion that we built for last episode actually took quite a bit of time I mean I had created all the new textures uh, and then I also created half of the town and that actually took a lot more time because I hadn't thought of all the lore and stuff that goes into it. And so it, was, it just took a lot more time for me to do um, because I was having to kind of think of that as I was building. Uh, and so I wanted to take some time to not play Minecraft. I think that is uh, one of the, th the reason why I wanted to bring it up was because I think that taking a break from playing Minecraft for a couple weeks is actually really good for refreshing yourself on Minecraft. Because if you're feeling burnt out and you're feeling like you don't necessarily want to play the game, then there's no real point in forcing yourself to actually play it. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking a break and doing something else. Like I've been playing uh, Divinity 2 or Divinity Original Sin 2 for the past two weeks and loving it because it's been totally different than Minecraft. There's no creative building or anything like that in that game and it's just really a fun game for me to play and it's been a nice change from minecraft and it's really helped inspire me more to get back into minecraft i think that's something that people don't actually think about doing or being helpful um, they just try and push through the burnout i think that's a good way to really burn yourself out and make you take a really long break uh, i i am not afraid to just drop minecraft for a couple weeks and not touch it so that i can get back into it because i love the game um, and I knew that I wasn't like burnt out on the game itself. I was just creatively burnt out, just didn't really want to have to think about it too much. Um, and so I played a little bit more of a mindless game or in, in Divinity Original Sin 2's case, more of a strategic game. And so I think that's been really helpful. So I thought that would be something of interest for you guys to hear about how to stay inspired because I mean, I've been playing in this game for this particular world for going on two years now. And I do get questions occasionally that are like, how, how do you stay inspired? How do you stay so interested in your own world? And one of the biggest things I can say is take a break. Even if you're not necessarily feeling uninspired, like I'm, I've, I've never been more inspired in my world, but I needed to take a break so that I could maintain that inspiration uh, and not really just dread having to make videos because there was for a time there was a little bit of dread in making videos um, and I think that that was because I pushed my brain <laughs> beyond its limits for a little bit and I so I just wanted to bring that up and talk about that uh, during this time lapse I thought it would be a good good sort of period for me to talk about it um, but I don't have any idea how much longer is in the time lapse. I'm going to try and line them up so there's not much. Uh, I've been talking for quite a bit. So hopefully we're going to jump right back into exploring things in first person. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the other side.
All right, so we are here. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and I hope you enjoyed my blabbing. We're here now and let's take a look at this stuff. So this is what it looks like in first person and I really am loving this village. I really have loved making this. I think it was, I was gonna actually do all of this off camera and not really cover it much, but I think it's a good thing to cover. I don't know what is happening with my keyboard. I'm just running all over the place. Um, I really like it. So the pathway is made out of mushroom blocks primarily, and then terracotta and granite variants. And I really love this combination. I think it looks really dirty and fits this area because I didn't want to use path block uh, because I really didn't think it matched. Uh, there's no dirt here, so there was no real need for path blocks. So I wanted to do something that was kind of like a dirty terracotta almost, and that's kind of, I mean, they're, they're similar. Um, this is just like a, a dirty, smoothed over version of this, um, and so that's kind of where my thoughts were with it. I'm li I like it. I think it looks really good. And then added some greenery in, but kept it kind of dead-ish looking, like it's pretty dried out. Uh, with the birch leaves and then threw in some cactus and cactuses and stuff i thought keeping with the sort of watery little bits like the uh, salt area over there will be um, would be pretty interesting just because this area isn't necessarily lush i don't want it to be lush but i do want it to feel a little bit more filled with life and so i thought this was a, a really good way of doing that i need to put a stair block there so that can have a stair in front of that house. But every house does have a little path that goes right up to it, except for that one, apparently. Uh, sorry to lie to your face. Uh, this way goes down, and then this one needs some stairs too. Uh, I'm probably gonna do slabs, actually. And then I need to put a couple variants there. But other than that, I really like how the pathway has turned out. I think it looks really good. Now let's look at this right here. These are super cool, I think. So this is kind of a blend of our steampunk style with the roof and this sort of Adobe-ish style. I don't know if it's Adobe exactly. Whatever the style is, um, kind of blended them together. So made the base more square and flat and then gave them a little bit of a, a roof there. You can see that also right there. This one's very much steampunk, I think, with the roof. Um, and this is essentially what I wanted to do was establish a relationship with this steampunk city and this place. And so they've gone ahead with their resources, made them storage areas for the salt that they gather right here in the salt flats. And then they actually can just store stuff here and store their salt and not have to go too far. Um, and it'll all stay off the ground and okay. Uh, a fun little thing, <laughs> barrel fell over and dumped salt all over the place. I think that's cool. This is a fun little uh, little wagon idea uh, concept for a bigger wagon I thought was kind of unique uh, using this. Uh, you can't have a front, but you know you win some, you lose some. And then I think it's just really cool. You've got this really nice storage area. It is two stories. Um, it's a, about to be sunset, but yeah, we'll keep talking, whatever. So we've got this cool little lift here that actually extends down. Um, this is one thing, if you're gonna have a little extendy downy bit like this, you gotta think of these holes, where this would actually extend into. And so we've got this, and it's actually a lift that goes up and down, and then they can actually take stuff and put it here, all the barrels. They can then take the stairs, come up, and if you push this lever here, you can see that there is a redstone thing that powers this, and that would be like the crank that then raises and lowers this. And as you can see, there it goes. And this is, so it would power this to raise and lower. This is where the rope would go. Uh, if you can't see, there is, it. there's a rope bit that goes up and over and extends out beyond, right? Ooh, ooh, let's get up there extends right to there out here and that's actually the rope extends to there and that's kind of like coiled rope is what i'm thinking and so that's just a way a way to add a bit of depth to a redstone thing that doesn't actually do anything um, you want to make sure that all your mechanisms actually look like they should work and i think that's a fun way to do it so you've kind of got coiled rope there that would be extended and and be able to be kind of coiled up when needed and i i really like it i really like the concept of it i think it's really cool 
So then they can raise and lower stuff, get barrels and stuff up here to store up here as well. These ones I figured would be more covered because it'll be maybe longer term storage. So they don't necessarily want to have all the loose salt blowing everywhere. So more covered area up here. And I think it looks really, really good. I am quite happy with these particular builds right here. I really like them. I think they're really cool. Now let's move right on in to our final thing. The road goes all the way over here. Didn't texture it up all the way, but this is our office building. And I moved our office building from there to here. And the reason for it is because I feel like the docks are right here and the docks aren't gonna be huge. Um, I really only want them to extend out by one and that's gonna probably double in length. So we can have a big airship right here. Um, and I don't think it needs to be like multiple ships can dock because it doesn't really make sense. I don't think if this, this area is not like high traffic or anything like that. So we're not going to have tons of docks. I think we're just going to have one. Um, so I moved the offices here and there's storage down below. And then there are, there's the office area here, but I wanted to make a really unique building. And so we've got the sort of flat bottom area here. I think this is kind of cool, but then I went with this weird roof, mainly because it was an even, uh, an even building. So what I like to do with even buildings is make it go to a point, a singular point, and then make it have this unique little flat roof. And let's fly over here so you can see. So it's got like this unique flat roof, and I think it, it just adds a kind of fun little depth to the build, and I think it looks really, really cool. Um, and so it just adds a little bit of flair, makes the building unique. I had a fun time making it, um, and so really enjoyed it. And of course, brought in the peony. I think the peony is going to be the flower of the steampunk city, mainly because I just really like them. <laughs> um, and then it also adds a nice flair to things. And the spruce leaves, of course, are really nice because, I mean, the steampunk city is going to make sure their flowers are nice and green. So that's why I chose those because they maintain their green color. So going on in, first off, this door. I I love this door. Really glad you guys really like the textures too. Thank you for all the feedback. I really appreciate it all. So we've got the inside here, and you're met with this staircase that goes right on up to the dock area. But these two sides are pretty much mirrored on either side. They've got storage, little shelves for barrels and stuff. These are like barrels of saltpeter. Um, and then you've got a little window you can view out. And it's just a, a pretty quaint little area. I think it's nice. Nice little build right there. And then similar thing here. A little bit of a different layout um, with shelves extending this way. I thought this was kind of unique making it so the window had a little opening here, but shelves all over the place. I really like it. I really think it turned out really nice. I'm very happy with everything. Going on up here is the office. And I... I'm very happy with the office. I think it looks really cool. So it's just a very simple little office area. I might put uh, some sort of paper or something down here, um, but just kind of a little seating area here for the officials to be able to, to sit at and the main official would be here. But this person actually has a love for flowers. So this we had this open area here and I was like, well, let's make it like they love flowers. And so this is a little bit of a little backstory behind the main uh, doc official that he loves flowers and just loves the smell of them and so he fills his room up here mainly because we had a weird storage a weird area here that wasn't for storage um, but needed to be filled and I really like it and then you can also get the light from above with those extra windows it's really cool very happy with how this has turned out um, and I really just I'm just happy with how all these builds turned out I'm glad I took the time to not play the game so that I could come back and be inspired enough to build something like this because at the end of the day I don't think I would have come up with this type of stuff if I was in that type the like burnt out mindset and so I think taking a break is really important and I think it is something that will help you be able to build better and I think it, it's going to be something that I want to cover uh, I want to cover the inspiration let me know do you think would you be interested I guess in me doing a video kind of like how to build better with lore, but more of a how to stay inspired in Minecraft long term. Um, because I've definitely got some different ways I go about staying inspired and taking a break when you're feeling a little burnt out is one way. There are like seven other ways I could talk about um, staying inspired because there's a lot of ways 
that you can get either burnt out on this game, and there's a lot of ways that you can actually reinvigorate your want to actually play the game. So let me know. If you think that would be good, I would love to be able to cover it. I think it'd be really cool. Um, but that's going to do it for this episode, guys. Sorry for the weird format, just being more of a time lapse and showy type of thing. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed, enjoyed the bills and builds and all that. We'll be back next episode covering, uh, I don't even know what we're going to be covering, either the cave or the salt flats. I'm not really sure. Um, but hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like in real life. Welcome to all you new people. Glad to have you here as always. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.